Hey guys, Joshua Peterson, Peterson Life Worker here today on a job in Lakewood. Um, I usually don't get this opportunity to show you the backside of a panel, but this worked out really well. The kitchen was being gutted out by a friend of ours, uh, Bob Bowery. He has his own construction company. Um, this is a residential job, very simple and small. We're going to be putting back. He is the same peninsula. Um, once we got into here and we had to pull new circuits, we realized that it wasn't all going to fit. All of these were generally going to right in here in the center point. Uh, we had to move that and I'll show you outside why. But before I do, I want to explain that you got to have to you have to seal these back side of these walls with um, caulking. If you're in a commercial situation, it'll be a fire caulk unless you're an inspector in a residential situation wants you to fire caulk that. But I did it because when we first opened this wall up, there was wasp hive inside of here and they came in through the bottom side of the panel and in. So, and we also don't want water coming down the back side of that panel dripping in here over time. Now this nipple goes all the way into the panel, so water will spread around it on both of these, and we sealed both of these. We had to put two new knockouts because of our height requirement outside, and I'll show that in just a minute. And then we went the high ones up here and the low, new low ones, everything down here. Um, we were careful not to hit our vent stack here, which is copper, and some of our other wires when we cut this in. Let's go outside and I'll show you what I did. Now the reason why we had to do that is you have three options um, when you're dealing with a panel. When you put a new panel on, they're a lot taller than they used to be. And as you notice, most of you electricians, um, all your grounds and your neutrals are always at the bottom. Such a pain in the ass because then you gotta end up extending everything. So sometimes it's nice to do this just so you have a lot more Romex. Now these are aluminum wires. How do you know aluminum? Silver, real simple. Bottom line guys is that if you don't wanna end up using, I uh, can't find them right now, but the purple um, Alumicons or the twist caps, and splicing everything in the panel well then you want to make sure that you have these as long as possible so this is one good reason the other biggest reason is that when I lined up this eccentric knockout to this two inch right here and I pushed it up my six foot seven mark to code in article 240 for the highest point of any breaker switch is right here it cannot be any higher I'm about six six right here so I was way up here I had to come down 10 inches so when I drilled the wall out with a feeler bit and created my hole I oblonged it a little bit further out as a two and a half inch right here. That allowed me to put this part on first. Then we measured this out, knocked this side out, and then once that was done, we knocked out wherever we felt like it was a good knockout for inside so we didn't hit a stud over here, and then we pulled our wire straight through. So we had three specific points that we had to do that. Now, when you knock out above a breaker, you have to use a ceiling lock washer. If you don't do that, you're gonna make a huge mistake if he catches you or you're gonna have water dripping into this panel right on top of this breaker, and you don't want that warranty call within a year, and then you own a new panel or a new one of these breakers, you gotta pop off, but then you still have this leaking issue right here. Now, at the top of this GRC conduit, I still end up putting my caulking up there to always seal the top of that hub, as well as the top of where that IMC screws in. And I'll show you that real quick. You can see that I sealed all of this right in here, okay? We also added right up here a 7 8 inch strut with another strut strap. Changed this from a 2 inch EMT to a 2 inch GRC, thicker wall conduit. Um, bottom line, if this knob ever comes out, they can always attach to this. It's not going to go anywhere. Now, we didn't lower the meter because it was already here in the first place. Excel usually has a little bit more grace about how high. Bottom line, I'm 5'9 and they usually don't care if it's right here, especially with these new bypass levers, you can pop it out. Again, I can't explain enough that most of our jurisdictions now with our power companies are going to this bypass lever. I heard Fort Collins was finally, and Loveland Power maybe, but I know Excel everywhere, it's just a lot of Colorado is expecting this, REA as well. So if you don't have this bypass lever, guys, and you're not getting a permit, you're, you don't wanna do that, because if they see that you got a brand new panel and an old painted conduit and an old meter that's smaller, with a brand new panel, they have the, you know, you, you, you could have that, uh, an XL guy knock on your door and also the city wonder what's going on, especially when you go to sell your house. So make sure you get this new bypass lever put in. Once you're in there, it is easier because it is a larger cabinet than the other, especially the old round ones, um, a lot more room to work. Now, when we knock this out, we do have to have a bond bushing across here. And then the rest of this, guys, we're just gonna slit all this Romix back to a quarter inch and start feathering it. I'll show you a video at the end when I get closer. I did up this from a 100 amp to 150 amp. The reason why we changed the service is a couple reasons. Uh, one reason was, uh, what's that? Do we, we didn't talk about it. 
Oh, yeah. Um, sorry. Uh, the, the, so the, the three things you want to think about when you're doing a service, um, well, the three options, I should say, is that if, if it's too high, if your disconnect is way up here, you can either A, try to get by with the inspector, which it may not work, and then you have to redo the whole service. B, you could build a platform up, and I wouldn't do it out of cement, because you should never put cement over any power or anything coming into this area, especially when you have low voltage communication. Um, personally, what I would do is I would build a box there out of some treated wood, and then do some um, rocks in the bottom, and then maybe sand and a paver there, so it can be moved later. But for the height of this, from what Bob was telling me, we'd have to have a step on top of it. Plus, you have to be about a 30 inches here. So that's a pretty big platform in order to step up to this if you didn't want to do what I did in there. Now, if you can't get in behind there like you can on some of your garages that are unfinished, or you can cut drywall in a garage and move it down, well, there's not much you can do. You have to build a platform. Um, you only have so much grace to knock this out. So again, we knocked out as, as low as we could here. We knocked out right here and here. You can't knock out here that well. I mean, you can maybe get an inch and a quarter in here, but you're only going to get about five pieces of Romex, and you're going to start putting a bunch of them right across here. That doesn't always work, especially if you can't get inside. So we got inside again. We pulled all that, and now that drywall will actually sit flush. I want to show you the old panel, why we changed it. Um, so for one reason, look at this nipple on this. I mean, this was right up in the drywall. This was pushing on the drywall right here as the Romex came around. We don't use those GRC nipples that far. We just use a small chase nipple or a very small MA, which is gonna be about 40% less than this length. The other reason why we changed it is because, you see this right here? This is a split bus bar main. You've got this feeder feed in this side and this feeder feed in this side. And guess what? These old ones, they never even had ties for two handle pull. But the code states when you're dealing with any kind of a neutral situation or even too hot it's going to be in article 240 and it's also going to talk about that probably uh, maybe in 200 on identification but you're going to talk about your switching and both switches have to kill at the exact same time not independently because both of these legs are feeding a and b and the other side of it is they can't have more than six handles above a breaker that's an article 240 as well so we could have kept this panel but when we did the kitchen we were lacking about seven circuits it was it, it didn't a lot of it was joined together I don't know how that passed so when you bring in your new circuits guess what we don't have enough space and now we also have to arc fault the new circuits that we did in article 2210.12 where it says for uh, kitchens this year um, so keep in mind guys you could call your jurisdiction and see if they're still on the 2011 code but you're not doing the customer any favors if they decide that the permit extends and they wait it and then it, it decides to expire and then you have to go ahead and get a new permit again. Guess what? You now have to go to new code because they adopted it. So we just went ahead and put the arc faults on there. We're gonna put that in tonight and I'll show you how all that ends up feathering in and all the arc faults in a second video. So um, also one other thing, the grounding. I'll talk to you guys about grounding once I get all that cleared out um, and how that all turned out as well. So thanks guys.